Welcome back. In the previous module, we were discussing the concept of the stationary distribution of a finite state DTMC. We said that there, if there were to exist a probability distribution pi, which satisfies this equation pi is equal to pi p, which is called the global balance equation, then if you start in this distribution pi at time 0, then you are guaranteed to remain in the distribution pi over the states for all time to come. All right. In that sense, uh, distribution among the states which satisfies the equation pi is equal to pi p is said to be a stationary distribution, if such a distribution were to exist. All right. Now, we also have to answer, we don't know if such a stationary distribution always exists. Right. So, we have to answer some of these important questions that we put down last time. Under what conditions does pi is equal to pi p have a probability vector solution? When, when does such a solution, uh, such a distribution exist? And question two, under what condition is the solution unique? Is there a unique solution or are there multiple stationary distributions? Right? These questions we have to answer. We also briefly discussed somewhat informally uh, the conditions for a long term convergence. All right? So we looked at under what conditions that does the n step transition probability pijn converge to some number pi j irrespective of where you start. All right. So we will try to answer these questions uh, in the in this module and the coming modules. All right. If we said that in answering this convergence questions, we said that if p i j n were to converge to something which is a function of j, that uh, limit has to be in fact the pi j, which satisfies pi is equal to pi p. This also we indicated. We use the Chapman Kolmogorov equations. To show that uh, this pijn, if at all it converges to a limit, it has to converge uh, to the solution of to a solution of pi is equal to pi p. All right. Of course, we don't know if it converges. We just said if it does converge, then uh, it has to converge to a solution of pi is equal to pi p. Right. So there are these questions that we have to answer. All right. Now. So let me, what I will do is I will put down the answer to these questions and slowly start seeing why these answers are true, all right? So the answer to the first question is that pi equals pi p always has a probability vector solution. For finite state DTMCs. All right. So you can always solve pi is equal to pi p uh, and normalize pi to 1 for a finite state DTMC. This may not be true for a countably infinite state DTMC. All right. Now, this so we have answered the first question uh, in the affirmative, right? We are saying it always has a solution, probably a solution. Now, is the solution unique, right? The answer need not be unique, okay? So pi equals pi p has a unique probability vector solution if and only if P is the transition probability matrix of a unit chain. All right. So what is a unit chain? A unit chain is nothing but a Markov, it's a finite state DTMC. So it's a DTMC with with a single recurrent class. Plus possibly some transient states. 
okay so uni chain is a markov chain in which there is one recurrent class there may or may not be transient states okay transient states are allowed but they may not be there also so remember that in a finite state markov chain you are guaranteed to have at least one recurrent class there could be more recurrent classes and there could be other transient states right however in a uni chain a uni chain is a markov chain in which there is exactly one recurrent class okay you are guaranteed one there could be many but in the uni chain there is exactly one okay one recurrent class and there could be transient states they may not be also all right so for a uni chain pi equals pi p has a unique probability of solution okay so for a uni chain if there is only one recurrent class then pi equals pi p has a solution and that's a unique solution all right generally what happens is that if there are multiple recurrent classes say there are uh, k recurrent classes then pi equals pi p will have k linearly independent probability vector solutions to pi is equal to pi all right so in that case if there are k recurrent classes for k greater than 1 the solution will not be unique okay so there will be k linearly independent solutions and all linear combinations uh, of those uh, linearly independent solutions will also also be solutions and so on all right so pi equals pi p has as many linearly independent solutions as there are recurrent classes in the uh, markov chain okay this can be shown so these we will prove later a1 and a2 these answers to the first few, first two questions we will prove later when we do uh, the spectral properties of the matrix p all right when we look at the eigen values and eigen vectors and all that actually we will look at the convergence question which is q3 right which is the long term behavior question and we will answer this question and also start we will start studying the third question a little more closely okay i'm closely following gallagher's book uh, for for this topic that's it so the question 3 is when does this uh, solution uh this when does p to the n converge to the matrix of pi 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 right in other words when does pi j n converge to pi j for large n for as n tends to infinity right the answer is the following p to the n converges the matrix of all you know pi 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 if and only if p is the Transition probability matrix of an ergodic chain. All right. So we're looking at convergence now. So P to the n converges to a this rows of identical rows of pi pi pi, where this pi is a unique solution. to pi is equal to pi p right so you have a uni chain so this is a uni chain so there is a unique solution to pi is equal to pi p and further we are demanding an ergodic uni chain okay so this is an if and only if statement so if you have a uni chain meaning there is only one recurrent class plus probably some transient classes and the rec and the rec recurrent class is a periodic so if you have a recurrent a periodic class which is there's only one recurrent aperiodic class and possibly some transient states then p to the n will converge to pi 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 right so this is uh, you can i mean you can just state this as a theorem which we will do eventually right so p to the n converges to pi 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 for an ergodic uni chain what is an ergodic uni chain uh, uh, a markov chain in which there is a single recurrent aperiodic class plus possibly some transient states correct right? 
So we will gradually build up. So we will study this first. Okay. We will head towards proving this first. Okay. So we prove this first because we can actually just look at the mechanics of what happens to the matrix P to the N. Right. We can look at the matrix P, multiply it with, uh, with N, N times uh, by, with itself and look at algebraically, right, in a very elementary way, look at what happens to the entries of P, A, J, N and actually conclude that under what conditions it converges to pi pi pi, right? Uh, whereas the earlier answers A1 and A2 will require a little more uh, uh, knowledge of the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the matrix P, which we will do later, okay? So this uh, proving A3 just involves closely looking at the matrix P, okay? And we do that in a few steps, okay? And we do it, basically we have a series of lemmas and theorems to finally prove this. So essentially, how do the, the so what? How do we do this? We look at so we prove this first by looking closely at the entries p i j n, right? The i j entry of p to the n entries uh, as and becomes large. Okay. The first lemma that starts us off on this is the following. For any Finite state DTMC for each state J and each integer n greater than or equal to one, we have. Max over i, e i j, n plus one. So the n plus one step transition probability. We are looking at max over i, right? Is less than or equal to max over i, p, i j, n, and Min over i, e a j n plus 1 is greater than or equal to min over i, e a j So what does this mean? Right, you are looking at, so you are fixing, so you are saying this for each j and each n greater than or equal to 1. So you are looking at two matrices, you are looking at, let's say this is the n plus 1 step transition probability matrix and this is the n step transition probability matrix. Okay. Now we are looking at for each j, right? So you are fixing, uh, you are looking at the max over i, right? So i in the, so the so looking at the max over uh, all the rows, right? I is the index of, I'm just checking. So I is the index of rows, isn't it? So this is the index of rows and this is the index of columns, right? Let's say you fix a particular column, right? Let me say you fix a particular column J, right? The same column J out here. Right? And you look at this jth column in p to the n plus 1 and p to the n. Alright? And you are looking at max over i and min over i. Alright? So you are running over this column, right? The jth column. And looking at the largest entry in the p to the n plus 1 out here. 
and the largest entry in P to the n. So what we are saying is that for each of these columns j, the largest entry decreases as n becomes larger and the smallest entry increases. Well, it may not strictly decrease or increase, but it's, you know, it uh, is less than or equal to or greater than or equal to for the max and min perspective. All right. So what we are saying is that as n becomes larger and larger, the largest entry decreases in each column and the smallest entry increases. Right. Now, if, so this is already very good because, you know, if something is monotonic, your, uh, your chances of something converging are actually pretty good. The only issue is that this is not a strict reduction, right? So, and this is true very generally, right? This is true for any finite state DDMC, all right? So, you have the max entry that is decreasing with n and the smallest entry in each uh, column that's increasing with n, right? It's it may not strictly increase, it may just stay the same also as n increases. So, these guys have to, uh, you know, they have a good chance of going to the same limit, right? But in some cases they do, in some cases they don't. Okay, but this is already encouraging. Okay, now uh, let me just walk you through the how uh, you know this is a very fairly easy algebraic sort of a proof comes directly from the Chapman Kolmogorov equations. So this I am just walking you through from how the this uh, you know how this is proved. So this is just the statement of the lemma that we just stated from Gallagher. Now if you look at so you just write this is just Chapman Kolmogorov. This is just Chapman Kolmogorov equations. P i j n plus one is equal to sum over k p i k p k j n, and then in the, uh, over here you replace that term with the max over l p l j n. Then uh, the summation just becomes uh, equal to one, right? And you get uh, this inequality, right? And the reverse inequality is proved by replacing that guy with the min, and then you get that. Okay. So this is pretty uh, straightforward. It's just uh, direct uh, algebraic. Uh, you know, it's a very elementary algebraic calculation. All right. So this is a very easy calculation for showing this result. Okay. Next. So as I said, this is good news, but it may not necessarily imply convergence. Okay. For some matrices, this uh, limit, uh, the you know, the max may go to some limit, min may go to some other limit, and so on. Okay. So but. If you have, if you impose a little more, right, if you assume that the Markov chain has uh, ergodicity, right, then you can prove a little more, right, meaning uh, if ergodic, uh, by ergodic Markov chain, we mean that uh, it is uh, both aperiodic and recurrent. 